Hello Art Beaters, Becky here for ArtBeads.com and I'm here today with a brand new video. Today we're going to take a look at how to do the twisted tubular herringbone stitch. I've made videos in the past about how to do flat herringbone and tubular herringbone, but there's a little variation you can do to make a spirally twisted look in your tubular herringbone ropes. So let's take a look at how to do just that. twisted tubular herringbone. So I have showed you guys in previous videos, which you can check out um, on our Facebook page or on our YouTube channel. Um, I've showed you guys how to do tubular herringbone and flat herringbone, um, but I wanted to show how easy it is to do twisted tubular herringbone. So twisted tubular herringbone is really similar to um, regular tubular herringbone. There's just a couple tweaks that you make to get that twisted look. So it kind of like is this twisted spiraling look that's really easy to achieve with the stitch. And it's really fun to do with like contrasting colors because then you see that that twist, that spiral even more. And look, there's that, that wonderful Green Girl Studios again. I love this piece, it's like a little like a little shell hiding a mermaid inside so super cute looks great with those seed bead colors so super easy to do I will show you I'm working with three different colors of Toho seed beads in size 8 dot they are round seed beads I've got some beading thread here I'm using some Miyuki beading thread. You can use um, any other brand you like. We've got KO thread, Toho 1G, Hana beading thread has a lot of beautiful colors. Fireline is also an option. Lots of different beading thread options. I'm also going to be using a size 12 beading needle. That is typically my go-to size. So to start the twisted tubular herringbone, it's really, uh, you start it the same as you do the regular tubular herringbone herringbone stitch and I did want to point out that we do have a wonderful PDF diagram for doing the tubular herringbone stitch and we also have step-by-step -step photo instructions for doing um, twisted tubular herringbone which I've linked to all of that in the video description so make sure to check out those instructions for further help and we also have a really wonderful guide to seed bead stitches where you can learn not just about herringbone stitch but all of the stitches that we feature at artbeads.com peyote stitch brick stitch all of them they'll all be in that guide to seed bead stitches so really wonderful resource to check out there all right so we're just going to start this like we would a regular tubular herringbone stitch so this will be a nice refresher for the tubular herringbone stitch and you start that with a ladder so I'm going to pick up two beads here in the in two of the same color. What we're we're going to go for this look where the colors are kind of striped and so that's how you're going to achieve it is by picking up two of one color, two of the next color, two of the last color. So to start the ladder stitch, I'm coming up through that first bead added. And this kind of like loops the beads around and makes them stack next to each other. I'm going to come back down through that second bead added. All right, so I've got the first two beads in my ladder stitch. I'm going to add another bead in the second color that I want to use. And to add it, I'm going to loop around through the other end of that bead that I'm coming out of. Do the same with the same color seed bead. Go up through that second bead. And then we're adding the third color, which is this lovely gold. Loop around that bead you're coming out of. Go back down through that bead you just added. Add another one in the same color in the same manner so 
So the first four rows of this are going to be um, just like regular tubular herringbone. So I've got those six beads added in the ladder stitch. I'm going to connect the last bead with the first bead to start my little tube. And you'll kind of do that in a similar way that you've been doing the ladder stitch where you go um, down through the top of that first bead and then up through the bottom of that last bead. And this is going to look wonky for the first few rows, but keep going, have faith, it will, <laughs> it will turn out. I'm uh, just going to go back through that bead. So I've got my little tube started here and I'm going to flip. So, um, so my working thread is at the top and my tail is at the bottom. So we're going to add four rows just of regular herringbone. So we just need to add three more rows. So for regular herringbone, I'm just going to pick up two of the beads in the same color. That's important to make sure that the bead you're coming out of, that's the color you're adding. So I've got that pink color. I'm coming out of that pink color, so I'm adding two of that pink color. And I'm going to come down through that next pink bead over. And then go up through the next green bead over. So since I'm coming out of the green bead, I'm going to add two green beads now on this row. Go down through the next green bead over. I think I've got a little knot, but easily pulled. And then I'm going to come up through the gold bead that's one over. Now the first few rows of tubular herringbone, they're going to look a little wonky. They're going to look a little not tubular. And you can use a little rolled up post-it note to kind of keep the shape of the tube if that's helpful to you. So I'm picking up two gold beads since I'm coming out of a gold bead and going down through that next gold bead over. All right, and now we've got to step up the row um, to get to the third row. I'm going to come through those two pink beads, and that's going to step up the row. Typically, you're only going through one. We're going through two to step up the row. And we'll keep doing that until we've got four rows. So I'm on my third row. We're just going to repeat what we did last time. So we'll add two pink beads come down through just one pink bead. And then we'll come up through just one green bead, the next green bead over in the previous row. And you'll see that right now my, my tubular herringbone kind of looks more like uh, three herringbone points sticking out from each other. But as you keep going, the rows start to zip up. Go through that, just the one gold bead over. Add two gold beads. Go down through one. And then, so we're back at the pink. This is where we step up again. So we will step up by going through the row beneath the previous row. Two pink beads. All right, so we just do one more. And you can see as I pulled that, it kind of zipped my previous rows up a little more. And you'll see as you keep going, that tube will start to take shape a little more. Uh, so we're gonna add two. This is our last normal tubular herringbone row. 
Go down through one pink bead, go up through one green bead. Zipping up a little more again. Add two green beads. Ah, I have the worst trouble picking up the green beads. <laughs> so we'll add two green beads, go down through one green bead. Go up through one gold bead. Add two gold beads. Go down through one gold bead. All right, so we've got four rows added. So now we're going to start implementing the um, techniques that create the twisted look of tubular herringbone. So to create the twist, adding beads is the same. It's like the step ups going through the next beads over is what changes. So to start the step up for the twisted tubular herringbone, we've been going up through two of the pink seed beads. Now we're going to go up through three of the seed beads. So you're going to pick up the uh, previous three, go up through the previous three pink seed beads. So we've stepped up the row to get ready for twisted tubular herringbone. <laughs> I like saying it like that. It's twisted. Um, all right, so this part is the same. You add two seed beads, come down through the next pink seed bead over. Now, to keep the twist going, you're going to go through not just one green seed bead, but two. So this little tweak is what makes the twist. All right, you're coming up through that green seed bead. You're going to add two green seed beads to your thread come down through one green seed bead. So that's normal. And then to keep the twist going, you're not gonna go through just one gold seed bead. You're gonna go through those last two gold seed beads. Okay, we're back to normal. So we add two gold seed beads, come down through that next gold seed bead. Now we're back at the uh, pink seed beads and this is our step up bead. So we're gonna go through three of those pink seed beads again. So just remember your step up color and when you reach that, you'll go through three rather than two. And you just keep going. So going through that extra seed bead each time uh, creates the twist. And you'll start to see that uh, become more evident uh, the more beads you add. So add two green seed beads. Go up through the previous two gold seed beads. So super easy little tweak to make the stitch look completely different. I love that. I also like to think about like who like who first thought of that like who first thought to do this stitch at all and then who was the person who was like hey if I do this it twists it I love that I love thinking about that um, and we're back at the pink so we're gonna go through three seed beads to step up the row you can kind of see like the twist starting to take shape which is really cool. So we'll add two pink seed beads. Just come down through one, but go up through two green seed beads, like so. Add two green seed beads. Just come down through one green seed bead. Don't get caught up on all your other beads. <laughs> all right. And then go up through to gold seed beads. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Someone said they probably invented it by making a mistake. <laughs> Love it. Happy accidents. Yes. That's probably true, actually. <laughs> This isn't what I meant to do, but boy, do I like it. Add two gold seed beads. Go down through one gold seed bead. And we're back at the pink, so we go up through three pink seed beads. So this stitch works up pretty fast, and it looks really cool. You can see I've gone a little further here on this piece, and you can really see the, the twist, the spiral start to take shape. So really fun. I love that just by making that little tweak... That little happy accident, I'm sure it was. Um, you create a whole new look in your tubular herringbone. And this is a really fun stitch. Um, goes by pretty quickly for a seed bead stitch. Looks really intricate and beautiful. Just a really fun one, really relaxing. You don't have to think too much about it. And it just looks so cool. Two green down through one green, go up through two gold, Boop. and then add two gold, go down through one gold. So adding the beads is just the same as regular twisted tubular herringbone. But when you're coming back up through beads, that's where the twist happens. So we're back at the pink. We got to step up to three. Yeah, it is a fun project. It's really easy, really wonderful. Um, we've got some design studio pieces that incorporate twisted tubular herringbone like this lovely uh, Sirens Cove bracelet that incorporates some Green Girl Studio and some wonderful crystal pearls in there as well. It's just a really uh, gorgeous look when it's all stitched up. Go through two green beads. Yeah, they do feel really cool when they're finished. Um, they've got a nice, like, slinky feel to them. You're so right, Jen. Oops. Gold. Two gold. Go down through one gold. And we're back at the pink, which is our step up color. So we're gonna go through three pink beads. So cool. So you can kind of see the twist is starting to happen. Yeah, so by using three colors, it makes it easier to know when to step up than by using only one color. Yeah, using three colors makes it way easier to tell where to step up. And I think the effect is more noticeable too. Like, if you use just one color, it would still have that kind of twisted, spirally look. But I don't think it would be as noticeable. So I really like using the three colors because it does make it easier to know when to step up. And I think it makes the effect stand out a little more. Go through two of those green beads. Add two. Yeah, so some, some stitches like a uh, right angle weave, which we did a couple weeks ago, it, it might be easier just to use one color because that's a really loopy stitch and with just one color you don't have to pay attention to any color patterns but for something like this the three colors makes it easier <laughs> man stitches are complicated different rules for each one right and then we're at the step up color so we're gonna go through three of those pink beads yeah, now we're seeing that that twist start to come in. Yes, this is a must project to try. You simply must. It's just so fun. And super, I think this one's super approachable. 
Um, it's got that crazy like twisted spirally look, but it's super easy to accomplish, especially if you're already comfortable with just regular tubular herringbone. It's essentially the same. You're just coming up through extra beads. So really easy. Go up through to gold. And these are fun, fun spring colors, I think. Go down through one gold. Yay, Annette, first time I'm learning this technique. Yeah, really fun. Again, we do have other videos for basic tubular herringbone and PDF diagrams, which might help you start out. But then it's really fun to start playing with that technique and start making some twisted looks. You can kind of see my twist is starting to take shape so wonderful yeah it is be it is doable tina um really great like if you don't do a lot of seed beading this is a good one to try because it does um it's fairly simple to follow and it does work up a bit faster than something like peyote or brick stitch so i definitely encourage you to try it And flat herringbone stitch is even more approachable if that's something you want to start with. So yeah, really easy. And I've got my my twist is starting to uh, is starting to show itself a little more. So really cool. Yeah, it's super easy. I love the I just love that striped look too. It looks so cool. Just go down through one. Yeah, it does look intricate, but super easy. Not hard at all. I'm at the step up, so I'm going through three beads this one, and we're ready for the next row. Yeah, my twist is starting to come out. Yeah, beautiful. So um, I'm, I can keep going with that, and I think that would be a really pretty like little bangle, like these bracelets. I think it would be even a wonderful necklace. Um, really pretty. So very excited. I can't wait to keep going with that and make something beautiful. So that is twisted tubular herringbone, super easy, um, but so fun. Uh, I think this is one you could definitely do while binging Bridgerton or some other favorite show. <laughs> um, super, super fun one. Um, how to end it. Yeah, I have a great video on YouTube for how to finish seed bead designs. I can kind of show you a couple examples here. So for this one, uh, what our designer did was just kind of looped through all of those last rows. Um, so if you if you are at the end of your row, you've made your entire rope, you're going to go through all of these and kind of link them up with the ladder stitch again. And that'll kind of cinch up your last rows. So I'm just kind of weaving through them to cinch them up. So just by weaving through them, cinches them up nice and tight. And what was done here was this was this pearl was just simply stitched on. So we probably weaved through that last row several times. And then, um, so let's say we've done that. And then probably just added the pearl here because this is nice and cinched up and then stitch the pearl to the clasp. So that's one way you can end it. You can end it with a bigger bead. On this one, the ends were woven through to tighten them up. And then this, um, this is actually a tiara cast bead cap with a post inside. You can't really see it because it's inside the rope. This was glued on. So um, we added this uh, bead cap to the end of the rope and we did kind of stitch the, um, the thread around the post that's within this bead cap and then kind of uh, wove it back into the beads. Uh, but we did also add some glue to make it extra secure. And this is a really 
firm hold. I'm thinking that we used um, two-part epoxy adhesive on this because that's a very strong hold. Another thing you could do is um, use a, a bead cap that doesn't have a post on it but that has a, um, a stringing hole. You could add an eye pin to that stringing hole and kind of stitch your thread onto that loop of the eye pin within the rope and then bring your eye pin up through here, add some beads on top of the bead cap and make a wrapped loop. So it would look a lot like this when you're done. Again, I do have a video on different ways to finish seed bead designs like ropes, peyote stitch bands, all of that. You can find that on our YouTube channel. Um, so definitely check that out. It's also on our Facebook page, but I think it's a little easier to search uh, with keywords and things like that on YouTube. So head to our YouTube channel and then just search for for how to finish seed bead designs, I think is what it's called. I can also send you a link here. Um, super fun, yeah, so lots of different ways to uh, finish those ropes. You can also, if you're making a bangle and it's long enough to slip over your wrist, you can just stitch uh, both ends of the rope together in like a little bangle. Uh, so that's another option. So all kinds of different ways you can finish your herringbone designs and your other uh, tubular seed bead designs. So super fun. So that's twisted tubular herringbone. Let me know if you have any more questions or what you want to see next. Um, love hearing your suggestions and I want to I want to make uh, videos that are helpful to you guys. So definitely let me know what you want to see next. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope that it was helpful and that you learned something. Please let me know if you have any questions by leaving a like and a comment and make sure to subscribe to our channel so you're the first to know when videos like this are out. Thank you guys so much and I will see you next time. Bye.